So, you know, based upon the media that's been released already, the trailers, the screenshots, you've probably figured out already that wildlife plays a big part in the game. Now, here's a funny story. Uh, they told us that they came up with the idea for the wildlife angle a long time ago, uh, and then Red Dead Redemption came out, and they were like, oh, crap, like somebody else did it. Uh, they also said that they admire what they do with the animals in Red Dead Redemption a lot, though they didn't really use any of that as inspiration for what they ultimately did. So one scene they showed us in the demo, um, Connor's kind of preoccupied with something. Um, as the player, you see this bear creeping up behind him. Um, and eventually the bear roars, he spins around, he sees the bear, and then he basically performs an assassination on the bear. Um, he kills the bear, stabs the bear, in the heart and it dies, it kind of falls on top of him, he has to get it off. And this kind of plays into the currency of the game. You'll be, be able to hunt wildlife, collect their pelts, and then sort of take them into the city to trade for other things. Now this also led into him telling us that there really is no uh, city building in the game. You're not going to be restoring Boston, you're not going to be restoring Philadelphia or New York. Pretty much the cities as they are are going to stay as they are. So some might consider that maybe a step back, but I never really found re rebuilding the cities to be all that compelling anyway, so I'm not too adverse to that. So as far as the weapons and the combat are concerned, there is a lot of interesting stories that they told about this. First of all, this is the first two-handed combat in an Assassin's Creed game. Um, the other part of it, too, is that the bow is a very important weapon in the game. Now, he is a Native American. That may not seem surprising to you, but there are guns in the game. Um, so I kind of asked him, like, why would you give him a bow if everyone else is using guns? And basically what they said is that the bow is a far more effective weapon. It takes so long to reload guns that they felt like it would actually slow the game down. So they give you a bow to use as your projectile weapon. Um, now, a lot of people have been concerned, you know, they, they feel like it's a little weird that Connor is wearing the typical assassin's outfit. Um, but basically what they said is, is that he sort of adopts his European heritage in that regard. Um, and obviously he is an assassin, so he wants to dress like the assassins. Um, also the weapons, there is a hidden blade in the game. I know that was a big, huge internet uproar for a while. It is in the game, they showed it to us. It works very similar to the ones in the past. Uh, there's the tomahawk, which you've seen already. There's the bow, which I talked about beforehand. And there's also this really cool weapon called the rope dart. And essentially what it is, it's this, it's, it's as, as you think it is, it's a big dart with a rope on the end of it. And what you do is you can throw it into an enemy throw the other end around a tree and then grab the rope and pull it down. So you essentially hang that person in the tree. And the scene that they showed us, it was hilarious. He uses a rope dart, he strings the guy up, the next enemy comes in, and the whole time you're fighting this enemy, you see the guy that you strung up with his feet kicking, like basically dying. So it's a really, really cool weapon. They said that they had actually worked on a chain-like weapon at first, kind of like what uh, Kratos has in God of War. They said they ultimately felt like it wasn't realistic enough, so they cut it. And then the, the last thing that they showed us that was kind of surprising in combat is there was one point in the demo where Connor used another enemy as a meat shield. Now, we've seen this in a lot of other games before, but I have to admit it was pretty surprising to see it in an Assassin's Creed game. So if you're like me by now, you kind of feel like the Assassin's Creed games, the engine in the game has kind of stayed the same for quite a while. Um, and developers behind Assassin's Creed 3 said that they put a strong investment in technology for this game, but it is still based upon the framework of the original. But I have to tell you, um, in my opinion, it has definitely received a large bump up. I mean, going even aside from the procedural animation I talked about, just the drawing power of the engine has increased several fold. Uh, they told us that they can fit 3,000 characters on screen at a time. And if you look in, the trailer has been released, you can see a shot of that actually, where he kind of comes up over the vista and you look down in the valley and you see a full scale war going on. Um, some other cool stuff, lots of detail in the cities. There's a lot more going on in the cities between the citizens, a lot more bustling around, a lot more people actually interacting with each other instead of kind of going on and doing their own thing. Uh, there are stray dogs running around the town. Um, overall, I felt like the, the towns in general felt a lot more alive. 
Uh, some other cool stuff, the shadowing, the lighting in the game looks absolutely amazing. Uh, if you remember the shadows in, in, in the games prior, always looked a little pixelated, a little stair-stepped. Um, even the self-shadowing in the trees, where you have hundreds of branches all casting shadows on other parts of the trees, look great. Really smooth, clean lines, uh, really impressed by that. Uh, character detail, definitely been bumped up. Uh, they made a point to really show you the faces close up. You can literally see the pores on the faces of every character in the game. Um, I know you've seen that before in other games, but a lot of times those aren't games that have really huge sprawling vistas. So I was really impressed with the uh, level of detail in the character models, uh, the way they were able to emote. Um, in all, to me, uh, definitely a step up from past Assassin's Creed games. Okay, so before we go, I just want to go over some of the things that I actually plucked out of the demos that they gave us. It really didn't fit into any categories, but they're kind of cool and I wanted to mention them. So at one point, they did show the button mapping thing that comes up, and uh, I was very lucky to be able to jot it down really quickly. Uh, there was an attack button, there was a grab button, there was a kick button, and there was a tool button. So little tweaks there. Um, the Animus obviously does return in this game, Animus 3.0. Uh, they said that the setting that you go into is inspired by DNA imaging, so take that for what it's worth. Maybe that's a clue to something that's going on. Uh, there's also the white room. If you remember when the game loads, there's this kind of empty room that you just kind of run, run around in. Uh, they said that that room will reflect the rugged terrain that's inside the game organically. Uh, Desmond is coming back. They said that already. They confirmed that. Uh, there's one shot where Connor uses a telescope to scope out the red coats. So I don't know how much of a gameplay element that will ultimately be in the game, but a little cool nugget nonetheless. Uh, the other cool thing too is that Connor enters the war. Uh, so there's this large scale battle going on uh, and he basically talks to Washington. He tells Washington, I'm going after the general. The general says, you're absolutely insane. And then he says to him, you're gonna owe me apology when I, an apology when I come back. So he literally runs head first into the battle and the Redcoats do what they always did. You know, they all fire at once in unison. There's cannonballs coming in. There's huge boulders on the battlefield. And that's kind of what you use as cover as you try to make your way across the battlefield. And uh, then he gets over there, he kind of he strafes, flanks to the left, goes through a section of woods, and then runs up and assassinates the general all on his own and completely plausible based upon the way they kind of set up the, uh, the scenario. So I'd have to say the most controversial thing that they showed us the entire time was scalping. Yes, before they showed us a demo of the game, they showed us kind of some concepts that they had worked on um, and they showed a scene where Connor killed an enemy, bends down with his knife and they do kind of do it out of frame, but Connor takes the guy's scalp and then he stands up and hands it to George Washington. Uh, you can pretty much hear the entire room gasp at that point. So I did ask them then, they said that they removed it from the game. So later on I asked them, I'm like, why would you take that out? Um, you know, they said that they felt it was, it was out of character for the franchise. Uh, they said that they had visions in their head of going on YouTube and seeing these videos of masochistic players basically just dropping a whole area full of enemies and then going one by one and taking their scalps. Uh, and they said that it just kind of disturbed them on a fundamental level and they were kind of afraid what the players out there might do with a mechanic like that. Uh, so ultimately they decided to cut it. So to wrap things up, I have to tell you I am extremely impressed with Assassin's Creed 3. It feels like a completely new game, um, just beyond the setting, just the way they've changed how the gameplay works, uh, how the towns have kind of lost a focus and you're not kind of trapped in the towns most of the time. Um, they told us that we haven't even seen two thirds of the game yet. We've only seen a very small slice of it. It's coming in October of this year and they already mentioned that uh, Alex Ross will be painting the limited edition box for the game. Uh, and they had some of that art on display at the event where we were at and it looked pretty darn good. So, you know, based upon my first take, I am extremely excited for Assassin's Creed 3.